No, it's not working. It's working. Yeah, oh, it is. Now yeah. it's working. Good, good. Thank you, Anders. Thank you. <coughs> so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a pleasure being here in Gothenburg. Thank you for inviting me. Um, Biocraft is a participant in Bio for Fuel, um, proud one, and, and that's one of the organizers of this conference. Uh, it's a privately held company in um, with headquarters in Trondheim, Norway, and it's uh, ten years this year. So I, I was a uh, was helping to found Biocraft myself uh, ten years ago, and I later became the CEO. Um, by education, I am an MBA and I have a Master of Science Engineering degree in, in Computer Science. Uh, so how did I end up in, in Biofuel? Well, uh, a little longer than 10 years ago, my colleague and co-founder, she um, got entangled with some biogas people and, and she encouraged me to take a look at it. So. Um, prior to that, I, I was CEO for the first time when I was 26 years old, so I'm sort of a serial entrepreneur, so I, I thought that the first thing we need to do is to find someone in Norway who really knows something about biogas. So we, we, we looked up um, a guy who was, uh, whose name is Svein Lilleng. Uh, he wrote a book called Biogas, so he obviously must know something about biogas. So we, we drove to his farm, we spent about five hours on that first visit, and at the end of a very fruitful talk with Svein, he concluded, Mariana and Howard, obviously you know nothing about biogas, but I still think that you are exactly what this industry needs. So thanks to those kind words, we marched on. Um, building a sustainable European biofuel industry, I think if we produce the biofuel sustainably uh, to, to actually make the European biofuel industry sustainable is not only but very much about profitability. So I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about Biocraft and our development and also our quest for what we call green profitability. So we are a little bit of a pioneer and in in our pioneering we have uh, set uh, a few world records even uh, not all of them ours but we have contributed so right now we have in operation the world's largest liquid biogas factory um, this is the same as bio lng and renewable natural gas etc i was at a uh, meeting at the International Energy Agency recently and one guy said something very clever and this is for you and me to think about Keith you should find one name for your product as long as you keep calling it uh, R RNG and bio LNG but we, we call it LBG liquid biogas so it's 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 liquefied pure methane but produced uh, from organic waste so um, right now we, we, uh, we have built and we operate the world's largest LBG factory. Um, uh, a little after that was opened last year. Um, the, the middle picture here is uh, of an Iveco truck. Uh, they um, did almost 1,800 kilometers on a full tank of liquid biogas. That is a, a world record for a biogas truck. And then uh, in May earlier this year, uh, we proudly announced the uh, what is by now the uh, so far the the largest uh, contract for delivery of LBG for the maritime sector with Norwegian uh, expedition cruise line Hutteruten. So now we can apply LBG in those large vessels as well. <coughs> so. Um, pioneering and, and even setting some world records. Uh, but I think that also, in at least in the Norwegian landscape, uh, we are maybe not the only one, but uh, one of very, very few privately held corporations. So 
So uh, there is a lot of municipal uh, players, but we are privately held. So for us, uh, profitability is very important. So we, we build, own, operate, and we, we sort of start with the lowest hanging fruit. We, we take organic waste, we transform this to biogas, we upgrade and, and liquefy it. But I think uh, very much like uh, Patrick from Estion was uh, saying um, they are trying to do, we, we also look at how can we make money in other ways than just uh, producing and selling the LBG. And on an on a even more general uh, sense, what we are trying to do is we are trying to uh, re redesign the value change of uh, chains of yesterday uh, consistent with the, with the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And the, the first part is actually quite easy. Uh, then it becomes harder and harder and harder and involves more and more R&D innovation. But that's also a fun part. But it takes a little money and a little time. So that is uh, sort of a bird's eye perspective on our uh, quest for green profitability. Um, Beyond technology and uh, getting better and better at financing stuff, uh, anyone who has tried to put together a fairly complex uh, industrial project financing puzzle know that that's a very important part of the game as well. But also uh, in, in Norway and Scandinavia and in Europe, if, if we are going to be world leaders, we need to also be the best at telling the right story and involving our business partners in telling that story and also uh, in, in a quantifiable and qualitative way. So, so this is just a picture of what I'm trying to say. We, we have customers like Hurtiruten. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very grateful customer in many ways that you can portray their ships against the backdrop of uh, Norwegian fjords. Uh, we have Tina. Um, they are, among other things, utilizing the, the trucks from Iveco. You can also buy them from Scania and Volvo, running on liquid biogas. So they are the largest dairy producer in Norway. Um, uh, and uh, we have the Norwegian salmon farming industry, uh, from which we take a lot of waste or byproduct. So it's important that we tell this story together with our partners and uh, I, I also very much agree with Patrick that part of this building a sustainable industry is working together and, and partnering. When we um, started out back to knowing nothing about biogas and, and uh, how do we do this, we, we started looking at um, uh, how which, which part of the market do we address and th this is from the Norwegian um, Environmental Authority and they are showing us from which sectors do CO emissions come from. And uh, there is a tick there which is in small private cars. Um, in Sweden you had a development of, of the biogas industry whereas I think you have 50, 60,000 smaller cars running on biogas. Uh, we saw in Norway that uh, we, we could not emulate the Swedish success story because uh, the Norwegian government had already put in place such attractive incentives for uh, buying and using electric cars that it would probably be really outright stupid to try to compete with that and, and try to convince people that they should have biogas cars instead. So we, 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 s we thought that you know private cars would be electric cars and in retrospect that was probably a wise decision. Uh, today, more than 50% of all new cars bought in Norway are electric cars. So they will all be electric. We saw that for heavy vehicles and in a maritime sector, there was uh, a need for a energy carrier um, that was uh, green and, and, and something else than electric. So, so we decided that we will make a product that can address those markets. And in the beginning, we hadn't even decided to, to do only biogas. We, we looked at uh, IH Square and some other technologies, but we, we ended up um, doing biogas because uh, it has a great 
sustainability story. Um, this is Karen Sund, one of the energy analytics in Norway. I don't know if Karen is here today, but uh, she very often cites the International Energy Agency. Biogas from waste is 179% renewable. Uh, recently, I heard Karen say that she found um, a biogas application in California that was about 250% renewable. Uh, Mr. Marius Holm, the, uh, the, the principal of the uh, Zero uh, Environmental uh, Organization in Norway, he said that the biogas is 200% is renewable, double climate neutral. So it has a great impact as a climate risk mitigation strategy. And uh, it is uh, uh, not too hard technologically. You, ca you can put a lot of different feedstock in, and uh, even if you, as one of my mentors said, do not really know much about biogas, you can still manage to produce some biogas. So that's, that's why we ended uh, choosing biogas as, as what our initial focus. So um, in this factory, we take feedstock from the Norwegian salmon farming industry, from, from agriculture, and we are also co-located with um, Norske Skog Skogn, the pulp and paper mill. So we take all the, the waste effluent from them and produce biogas from that as well. And uh, we were lucky enough uh, to have the Norwegian prime minister open our factory last year uh, in September. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Now, beyond this, uh, we, uh, again, we, we, we need to find ways to get better at producing biogas, but also better at producing other stuff to evolve more into, uh, let's call it a biorefinery. So right now we're working on digitalization, um, feedstock pretreatment, digested post-treatment, and like uh, the two gentlemen before me, uh, we are uh, also working on methanation of CO2. The idea that you have um, produce uh, hydrogen via electrolysis and then you synthesize more biogas is, is very intriguing. Uh, one of the big owners of Biocraft is a power utility, so they, they have some interest in this as well. I, I would say that it's not easy to do this full scale though, uh, commercially. Uh, it's more easy to see the technology path. Uh, but we will probably get there. So, <coughs> a little bit about markets. Markets, they are important. That's, uh, we, we must have paying customers. So, um, in, the, the, in the last couple of years, uh, Volvo, Iveco and uh, Scania and probably others, they have introduced this uh, LBG, LNG uh, heavy trucks. So uh, this is a climate risk mitigation strategy for heavy transportation that is available now. And it has a great range. I mean, it's a really uh, useful tool for uh, transportation companies. I think that's why Tina, uh, the largest diary company, and, and even uh, the largest privately held transportation company in Norway called Litra, they have now announced that they will um, roll over their fleet to, to LBG trucks. The, uh, I, I don't like to talk down electricity, but the reality is that there is also, especially in among public buyers, a lot of confusion. What is the future? Will it be hydrogen? Will it be electric? Will it be biogas? And uh, the answer is yes, it will be all of them. Uh, but for heavy transportation, uh, liquid biogas is a fantastic energy carrier. Uh, the rumored Tesla semi truck that may come in three to five years. What is the range of that? Does anyone know? It's about 700 kilometers. This is available now today and it has a range of 1800 kilometers. So that's probably why, among other Tina, uh, choose to, to go for this. And then also to the storytelling, uh, Tina, they, they actually developed their own branding strategy for this to communicate with their market and their customers. They call this cow power. 
So of course we we also uh, take in a lot of manure as feedstock at Biocraft, and and we produce biogas based on that, so that Tina can tell their story about cow power fuel for their trucks. It's a good story. Um, here is uh, uh, leading global company DNVGL's view of uh, available solutions for 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 shipping. And you see that the only available solution for deep sea shipping today is LNG plus LBG. There might be other solutions available uh, in the medium to long term future, but today this is the only available solution. And, and Norway is a proud shipping nation, so it's a, it's a great place to pioneer these solutions. Um, we are part of the Norway's green shipping program and earlier this year, as I've already mentioned, we, we announced the uh, partnership with uh, Hurtigruten. So that's the start. Six of their ships will be running on, on uh, liquid biogas from uh, 2021. Um, yeah. We... Um, Right now we are in the process of uh, expanding the capacity at Skongen, where, this, uh, where our factory is, the world's largest. And we are looking at some additional sites, but uh, we, we are still a, a very small, privately held industrial company and, and we have to grow step by step. But I think that uh, in terms of how much can be done in the next few years or decades for that matter, uh, the potential is uh, is endless. We, we are doing uh, we're investing a lot in R and D innovation in, in in many many fields, um, but but only if you look at the structure of the European biogas business, there are endless opportunities. I would say uh, in in consolidation and thinking on an industrial scale. So um, one day we will probably produce. Uh, even bio jet fuel based on, on on biogas, but not biogas as jet fuel, but you know, you, you can refine it. So I, I think I'll end there. Um, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Howard. Thank you.